welcome back to the channel. Today's discussion is do you think you can hack it in the construction industry? This is the first video in a series I'm calling the Down and Dirty series and it's essentially geared for people who are possibly thinking about getting into the construction industry, giving them a real look at what it would take to get into it, what you can expect and kind of just laying the groundwork for a career path in pursuing construction. This video is geared for those people who have zero experience in construction, whether you're young or old, if you've been thinking about getting into the industry, really what can you expect? How hard is it? Is it something that's worth pursuing as a career path for you? So I'm gonna preface this whole video and say, if you want the distilled essence of what I'm about to talk about, I want you to go out onto a job site in 100 degree weather somewhere, and I want you to find a porta john that hasn't been cleaned in two weeks and is piled high. And I want you to go in there, I want you to drop trowel, and I want you to take a long poop and think about life. And if you're okay and you're comfortable doing that, if you can accept that that's going to be part of your daily life, then you might have what it takes to be a construction worker. You might have what it takes to be in the excavating industry. If not, you probably should look elsewhere because this is just a reality of the job. Number two, if you don't drink Monster or you don't like Monster, you need to change your ways. It's a little known fact that 90% of the job sites out there are fueled on monster and garbage junk food. So if that's not a, an acceptable dietary regime for you, you might wanna think about a career path that doesn't involve the construction industry. But in all honesty, let's kinda of get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna talk about some good points because the rest of this video, I'm gonna sound pretty negative and I don't wanna give the wrong impression. The excavating industry is a fantastic industry to go into. I have not regretted going into it uh, once in my career. Uh, it is it is a fantastic line of work. I'd be proud to have my kids go into the earth moving industry But I did want to be realistic about the job So some of the good points about the construction industry and why I love it so much the first thing is it's just fun I mean you get to go out every day and you are spending all your day outside uh, I'm not an office type person. I could not stand being cooped up in an office all the time And so to be able to be out on a job site in the elements, that's really rewarding to me It's an aspect that I really like you're joking around with all of your coworkers on the job It's just really a fun atmosphere. It's a fun environment like I touched on you're outside You're not cooped up inside all the time another great advantage is you get to work around big machines I don't care who you are. That's a great time working around that big heavy equipment. I was on a job with a 385 excavator, a D11 dozer, and a 988 loader. And when the fuel truck would come around and we'd all get out of our equipment, it felt like you were standing in between buildings. I mean, that's how big the iron is on some of these jobs. And I don't care who you are, that's just cool to be out there in the middle of all that and to be a part of it, not just witnessing it from a distance. So that's another great advantage. Another great aspect is every day is different. I mean, it seems like it would get redundant moving dirt, but at the same time, you're always put in a new set of circumstances. You're always put in a new situation. Your job site's changing on a regular basis. It's not like going to an office job where you're stuck in a cubicle and every day you sit at the same spot and every day you do the same set of things. Every day on the job is different and 100% and every day in the excavating industry especially, you're learning something new. I don't care if you've been doing this for the past 40 years. If you're not learning something new, then you're not paying attention because you really do pick up different tricks from other operators or you might have a laborer on the ground that will show you some way of doing something a little different that helps him out. Or you talk to an inspector and they might shed some light on, if we do step A here, and the inspector explains step C here, it kind of makes sense why we do everything that we do. So you're always learning in this job. And for me especially, I need a job that's really mentally engaging, otherwise I get bored and I get burnt out and I go do something else. In the excavating industry, it is every day is new, you're learning, it's very engaging. So it is a great industry. I don't want any of what I'm about to say take away from the fact that this is a fantastic industry to get a career in. It's very rewarding. And there's, there's honestly, there's a lot of money in it. It's a very lucrative job. You're gonna work your ass off for it, but it is a very lucrative industry to go into. And in all honesty, with the way the economy is, the way there is a lack of skilled trades out in the workplace right now, 
uh, wages in this sector are only going to continue to go up because there is a huge shortage of workers right now in this sector. So it used to be you had to go to college to make money. I'm right there at that gap in the generations where I was told, absolutely, go to college, you're going to make a lot of money. And the reality of it is I came out of college right when the whole economy flipped, right when the job sector flipped, and I'm actually making more in the excavating industry than a lot of my friends are in their jobs that they went to after going to college. I went to college, but I, I ended up going into construction. I didn't use my college degree at all, and I was making more money in the construction industry than I was my, my counterparts on the college side. So for what it's worth, great money. So now let's get into the negatives of the job. And again, negatives is a relative term. It's what should you really expect? I wanna kind of make this video of this is the gloves off, this is what you realistically need to know you're up against if you decide to go into this industry. That it's not all rainbows and butterflies, it's not always sunny and 75 degrees on the job site. This is a hard industry. So my first point is, overall, in, in all aspects, this is a hard career path. This is not an easy career path whatsoever. The number one thing I'm gonna talk about, and this is something that I dealt with in the construction industry, pretty much any old timer you talk to on the job site is going to talk about this aspect. It is a load of hours, especially up here in the north. I live in Michigan. We have about a six to seven month construction season. You're not going to see home during the summer. You're going to be on job sites for anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, most of your companies are going to work six days a week during the summer months. Uh, some of them will work seven. My first job when I got in with one of the big contractors in this area, the first year I didn't have a day off for 30 days straight. And then it was another 45 days before I had my second day off. The only reason we got those days off is because it was national holidays. It was seven days a week. It was 12 to 15 hours a day every day. When we got into the swing of the season, we were putting in about 16 hour days consistently and it was go, 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 go. So you do need to be aware that if you have a family, if you intend on starting a family, you need to have a conversation with your spouse that if you do choose this career path, you know, my wife was a single mother for six months out of the year. I would leave the house at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to be on the job site on time. I would generally get home about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. That's literally enough time to shower, eat, go to bed, and then you're back at it the next day. I had two little ones at home. I still do. I didn't get rid of them, but I have two little ones at home at the time. We would live in the same house and I wouldn't see them for three or four days because they were asleep when I left the house and they were asleep when I got home. So if family life is really important to you, you do need to go into this knowing that it is a lot of hours and it is a lot of time away from your family. So that is just something you need to be realistic about going forward into this job. The second point that, that makes this job hard, it's physically demanding. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about a construction job and I live in Michigan, we're a union state, so I was a union operator, which means that we had union laborers. That doesn't mean that you don't do any hard physical labor. I mean, at the end of the day, I was still responsible for shoveling the tracks on my dozer or my excavator. If you wanna be a good person, you jump down in the hole when you've got a laborer working by himself and you've got a second to help him out, you jump down there and you help the guy out. It's it's heavy lifting, it's bending over, you're climbing all over equipment to grease and to wash your windows and you're not going to get out of this not doing any physical labor. This is a physically demanding job, it is the construction industry. Likewise, you're out in the elements and, and I know that when you think, oh, I wanna go into construction, that looks awesome. If you're anything like me, you always visualize a perfect sunny 70 to 75 degree day, the birds are chirping. That's not reality. The reality is you get that for a couple weeks in the spring and you get that for a couple weeks in the fall and in between there, you are sweating your balls off, it's hot, the sun's beating down on you, or the, the flip side of that is you're expected to work in rainstorms. When I was running a concrete breaker, I was leading the job. I didn't have the ability in that position to take the day off because I had a whole job rolling behind me, which meant that I was standing next to that concrete breaker for 12 hours a day in thunderstorms with my rain gear on, beating concrete. That's the expectation. The job doesn't wait until conditions are perfect. The job has to get done. 
And so you're expected to be there and you're expected to show up on those days. So again, you're out in the elements. You are not in an office. It has its perks, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that I'm not in an office, but the flip side of that is sometimes you're working in a rainstorm. Sometimes you're working in a snowstorm. Sometimes you are working when it's 105 degrees outside, like when I was running equipment down in Texas. It's miserably hot you're still expected to work. You don't get to take the afternoon off because the sun comes out. So another aspect you need to be aware of is it is a physically demanding job, not only from the physical labor you're gonna have to do, but also from the fact that you spend your entire life out in the elements. Another aspect of this job that's often, it's not necessarily, I don't wanna say overlooked, but it is, it's often kind of at the back of everyone's mind. It's not really something everyone thinks about up front. This is a dangerous job. Obviously job site safety has gotten loads better over the last 20 to 30 years as OSHA has really come in and changed things and just overall the mentality becomes more focused on industry safety. That being said, there's no getting around the fact that you're working around heavy equipment, it's loud, you can't always see. In fact, if you've watched any of my videos from, from when I'm in the cab, one of the first things that you notice about heavy equipment if you haven't ever been around it and in it, visibility is not fantastic. It's okay, but it's not fantastic. You have blind spots all over the place. There's always the possibility of getting crushed by a piece of equipment. Trench cave-ins is another thing that kills guys every year. And it's just, there's no getting around the fact that you are in a dangerous environment. There's a lot going on. It's busy, it's chaotic. People have 10 things on their mind at any given time. It's a dangerous job. So you always have to be careful on these jobs. You have to have your head on a swivel. You can't ever rely on someone else to pay attention to you. You are responsible for your own safety and you need to be aware of that going into this industry. So another element of this job that you don't really see from the outside, but you it becomes blaringly apparent when you get into it. This is a high pressure job. If you think this is a relaxing job, you are completely misguided especially when you get on these heavy civil jobs like airports, highway projects, most of your road construction where you've got a pretty strict deadline. Pressure is coming from the top. There are strict deadlines that your company has to meet when it comes to finishing these jobs and if they don't, they lose millions of dollars. That pressure immediately translates down to your foreman who's expected to keep those deadlines and expected to keep that job schedule. And once they waver off a job schedule, people start coming unglued. And that foreman is directly translating that to you, the guy in the seat or the guy on the end of the shovel. If you're not getting it done, if you're not going as fast as he thinks you need to be going, you're gonna hear about that and it's not gonna be in a nice way. Which leads me to my other reason this is a hard job. You don't get pats on the back in this job. You don't get positive compliments. What you get when you do a good job is not bitched at. And I know that sounds dramatic, but that's really the truth in this industry. If you're doing a good job, that means you haven't heard from your foreman that day. If you're doing a not good job, it generally comes with the foreman jumping out of his truck, screaming at the top of his lungs, calling you every name in the book, and telling you that you're an idiot, and telling you sometimes to get off the job. And no joke, I've been told to get off the job on a job site, and then have the foreman call me at seven o'clock that night telling me where he wants me the next morning. That's just the dynamic in this industry. And it's one of these that you have to go into it with thick skin. And if you don't have thick skin, you better get thick skin pretty quick. So I asked for ideas on this video to a couple Facebook groups online and a couple guys touched on this perfectly. You need to leave your feelings at the door when you come to work in the morning in this industry. If you're gonna get your feelings hurt, this is not the industry for you. You have to be able to take absolute crude, like critical beat downs from your foreman and keep on going. And it's okay to get pissed about it. It's okay to swear back sometimes when the circumstances are right. But at the end of the day, you've gotta be able to take that, let it roll off your back and keep on going. And that's actually how you get respect in this industry. As hard to believe as that is, everyone on that job, you can talk to them. They've all had a shitty foreman. They've all had a shitty job they've been on. They've all had some set of circumstances that they've had to work through throughout their career. Respect comes with the fact that you've been through that and you've pressed forward and you've continued on in the industry instead of quitting. I like that part of the industry. I like the fact that this is not an industry for just anyone to get into. You really have to prove yourself. Part of the reason it's as bad as it is right now is because the industry is having a really hard time getting people who do have thick skins, who do want to put in the work. 
And as a result, as unfortunate as this is, most foremen are actually gonna be pretty rough on you for the first couple of weeks that you're on a job because they're trying to weed out those individuals that are going to quit, that are going to have some sort of a problem early on before they invest a bunch of time in training them and working with them and teaching them. You know, if you turn around and quit two months into a job because you got your feelings hurt and the foreman's already spent all this time training you and they've got you up to speed and you're doing this aspect of the job, that's a total waste of their time. And so sadly, what it's caused the industry to do is actually double down on being hard on people when they first hire in to weed out those individuals that aren't gonna make it. I can't stress this enough. This is not an industry for everyone. It is a very hard industry. It is a very demanding industry. And you do have to roll with the punches. If you can't handle that, I would highly advise you to look somewhere else. No, I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper of this industry by any means. I want you to go into it knowing what to expect. And I don't wanna give you any false ideas of what that job site's gonna look like when you walk onto it. So to go back to the beginning of this video, now that I've all scared you away, it's a fantastic industry to go into. I have loved every minute of it. I continue to love it. I spent eight years on a job site and with the little ones at home, I decided to switch career paths and go into selling equipment. I did that for two years and now I'm actually committing all of my time to making these YouTube videos just so I can continue to be involved in the industry. I still go out on job sites and fill in for buddies that have construction companies when they're short an operator. I still try to get on the job site and in the equipment as much as I can because it's something about it just gets into your blood. It's something that you really love doing. It's just, it's fantastic, you, you'll love it. Once you get into it, if, if you can toughen up and if you can take the criticism, you'll absolutely love it. It's absolutely rewarding. I hope this has been a helpful video for any of you guys looking to get into the industry. I hope I haven't scared you off too bad. Now that you have a realistic picture, if you do plan on going forward, keep up on this channel because I'm going to start a series of videos, the Down and Dirty series, where I'm taking this is, I'm gonna walk you through the process of, okay, now that you've decided you wanna go forward, how much will you make? What do you expect on your first day? And what do you bring? What are some skills that you wanna have? So absolutely stay posted. I will start getting that content up to help you guys out. My goal with this whole series is to help the newer generation get into this industry because like I keep saying, it's a fantastic industry to get into. So if I left anything out, if you've got any questions, if there's anything I can help you with, absolutely comment below. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next video.